thank you all good evening so distinguished uh, guest excellences dear participants and uh, a very good evening to you all on the behalf of the art society i am mohammad mamunia welcome you all to this auspicious occasion closing ceremony with the climate camp organizers the art is a non profit organization working on community development youth engagement volunteerism uh, emergency response disaster management the art aim to nullify the major social inequalities and problems with a vision to making positive change in life and nature as the name the art suggested this endeavor aim to stay connected as close as possible to very base of the planet that is the people to engaging and replenishing the resources to their maximum potential the art says of uh, its dream to create more awareness while working on community development youth engagement volunteerism emergency response disaster management majority development minority development and plans to enlighten bangladesh with the positive and efficiency as a whole so like we are also working with a few of the project it's uh, one of the project we are basically working with it's called growing together with the european union and erasmus plus and we have another project it's called um, diversity for peace with the undp bangladesh and we are basically working with this um, concept is unity is identity working with the uh, like uh, uh, different different your communities in our country and also now we are working with the like this um, initiative is called um, climate camp and today is that day we are gather here to witness the closing ceremony of the noble initiative of the art to remagine recreate and restore our mother nature through climate camp on the world environment day 2021 this year is been organized successfully through virtual platform climate camp is just not a camp but a movement to recreate remagine and restore the earth by your participation action and collaboration for the planet individuals and organizations have participated and hosted this climate camp on the topic of resetting our relation with the nature and provide ideas solutions according to our guideline so honorable guests and excellences in our today's program we have with us his excellency mr nahim razak mp convener of the climate parliament and the member of the parliamentary standing committee on ministry of foreign affairs and also with us her excellency ms queenie israp peterson ambassador of denmark to bangladesh mr monohar mustafa country lead european climate foundation mr asif putin ahmed acting director of emk center and we are sorry to mention that due to some emergency and unavoidable reason her excellency saida monata sting the high commissioner for bangladesh to the united kingdom couldn't join with us in this today's program having said that as an expert session um, session speaker we are also pleased to have with us silvias munira program officer bangladesh government presidency at cbf and lamia mohsin junior consultant resilient and inclusive growth cluster undp bangladesh distinguished guests dear climate camp organizers audience and everyone welcome you all to today's program thank you for making time and joining with us here today so ladies and gentlemen i want to call upon shakla satrina co founder of the art to introduce today's event with a welcome speech please welcome shakla satrina for her speech thank you you are muted you are muted Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank I'm you. not audible. Uh, okay. So, uh, yes. Welcome and thank you so much for joining today. Before I go uh, for my welcome speech, I would like to share the video that we made and prepared. We we have shown this yesterday, but however, we still want to show today because we have some new faces and new people around us. So let's have a look. Uh, 
Um, I'm your Abul Khair, Murshi. আমি আবুল খায়ের মুর্শিদগঞ্জের লোহজং থেকে বলছি আমি মোহাম্মদ মনির হোসেন চট্টগ্রামের আগবশী এলাকা থেকে বলছি আমি ময়মনসিংহ থেকে শাহরিন সিদ্দিকা জুয়েটি বলছি আসসালামু আলাইকুম আমি মরিয়ম আক্তার নুপুর কক্সবাজার থেকে বলছি The Art Society is a climate camp. 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 I Thank you so much, um, everybody, and thank you so much that you, um, you have been seeing this um, with your patience. So yes, I would like to start my uh, speech with saying that we are the last generation who can restore our mother nature, and because we are the generation restoration. Climate Camp 2021, an initiative by the Earth Society happened yesterday on the World Environment Day, 5th of June, 2021. It was the day of doing something good for the nature. Following the launch of the UN decade on ecosystem restoration 2021 to 2023, Climate Camp has encouraged youth of Bangladesh to take action on resetting their relation with nature. Selected 50 organizers hosted climate camp at their own communities. 400 plus participants joined the climate camp from different parts of Bangladesh on the topic of resetting our relationship with nature and submitted their ideas, solutions, and best practices. Through this movement, our purpose is to build the community level network of climate citizens in Bangladesh bringing the community-led initiative, solution, and sharing best practices for better adaptation and mitigation, and providing them opportunities for collaboration locally and globally. Because we believe in this process, every small step has a significant impact to achieve the goal of the decade of restoration and SDG 2030. And through the power of youth, we can reimagine, recreate, restore our mother nature. On behalf of the team member of Art Society, I would like to say that we are very proud that our youth of the motherland have taken their bold steps, which has brought us together here. Not only in Bangladesh, but we have interns and volunteers from Denmark working with us and a climate enthusiast from Fiji who organized a climate camp in his nation to collaborate with this initiative. Today, we are more confident as we get our honorable guests with us. I would like to thank all of you for consi considering your time and uh, giving us your you know, precious time. 
I show my highest gratitude to one of the most inspirational person for us to develop this project, Mr. Nahim Rajak, MP, convener of uh, the Climate Parliament of Bangladesh. Thank you, Nahim Bhai, for being with us. This is a great honor and big boost for all of our organizers and us, of course, uh, to have Her Excellency Ms. Gwini Iskrab uh, Peterson, Ambassador of Denmark to Bangladesh, to get the global perspective from her. I must mention that the art has a very special relation with Denmark, as we have Emily from Denmark here today, who is working with us in this project and she has been developing and contributing to the Climate Literacy website. She is our sixth intern from Denmark in the partnership with Action Eva Denmark, where we host Danish volunteers or interns in Bangladesh. Not only that, uh, in 2019, the ARC organized a youth exchange program called Going Together. This campaign was a part of capacity building in the field of youth where we received 25 Danish students who came to Cox's Bazar and stayed along with 25 local youth of Bangladesh, building a strong best practice for the host community and Rohingya refugees. So yes, we have a long tail bonding and we would like to continue and make it even stronger. Today, uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we, we don't have with us like a Miss Sadi, uh, Saida Muna Tasnim, uh, for an available reason and uh, for an emergency, she couldn't be here, but she has sent her hardest message for all of you. The direction of Mr. Monoir Mustafa, country lead, European Climate Foundation, and Mr. Asifuddin Ahmed, acting director of EMK Center, will guide this youth network to work together and bring the outcome of the climate camp in the true light of the impact on our mother nature. A big, big thanks to all of our climate camp organizers and participants who joined yesterday and hosted their climate camps and submitted their valuable ideas. Lastly, I would like to say that the climate camp will continue every year from now. And I want to finish my opening speech by saying a beautiful quote from the world environment side that we cannot turn back time, but we can grow trees, green our cities, rewild our gardens, change our diets, and clean up river and coast. We are the generation that can make peace with nature. Let's reset our relation with nature. Thank you. So now we will go uh, and have a look of some of the highlights of yesterday climate camp because we have been getting a lot of pictures and videos so we we tried to make a very small presentation showing how the in the whole bangladesh um, how our organizers have been doing the climate camp thank you Thank you, Shakla Satyutina, for welcome speech. 
uh, for today's program. Now I want to call upon today's first speaker, our um, guest, Mr. Asimuddin Ahmed, acting director of PNK Center, to share his thoughts with us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, organizers, and uh, thank you, uh, Honorable MP, Ms. Naim Razak, uh, Honorable Ambassadors, and Honorable Delegates uh, from European Union. Uh, it has been a pleasure for us to be able to participate in this program with uh, our, our organizers here, and we're, we're so proud to be able to organize the whole uh, climate camp with them. Uh, because uh, Edward M. Kennedy Center, when it was created like almost 12 years back, uh, the main purpose of it was basically to uh, address certain challenges and issues faced by the youth. And by youth, we often mean not only the physical youth, but also people who are actually willing to do and uh, things and then take challenges. Now, uh, very briefly, our, our whole objective uh, for overall for the Edward M. Kennedy Center uh, is basically uh, to look at five kind of broad issues that we kind of often talk about. And uh, these issues, if I just may say briefly, it, it is actually to promote youth leadership and societal development, build skills and expand opportunities for employment, underemployed youth, and create employment opportunities, encourage uh, greater academic collaboration between Bangladeshi students and US universities, uh, create economic empowerment uh, through entrepreneurship, and finally, to promote STEM education. Uh, now, to do this, the way we are actually involved with this particular initiative is basically climate change. If you think about the whole impact of climate change and environment, this is actually cross-cutting in all the five pillars that we talked about, and it is actually cross-cutting every aspect of life. And we've been working with youth on major issues in, in promoting arts and culture, in finding out different ways of actually addressing uh, very different issues that are actually extremely pressing for our current world. Now, when we talk about climate change, and as there's a big focus on STEM education in Bangladesh, and we just have another even tomorrow, uh, which is basically there are six universities coming up, uh, US universities for students who would like to have higher education on environmental science and particularly on climate change. Uh, and, and what are the opportunities there? The main reason we involve uh, youth here is basically it's, it's actually their work. And, and when I'm saying youth, uh, Initially, our whole goal was to look into the population group from 17 to 24, but we are now looking more and more into 14 to 24. The main reason going to get seven or even below that was what we are finding out more and more that if changes need to happen, uh, the changes need to happen at an earlier age, uh, much earlier than that initially we're targeting, which is actually after grade 12. Uh, so we discussed this within our EMP Center and with the Embassy of the uh, United States. And we decided that we'll actually uh, reach out to uh, kind of the age group of 14. Uh, in particular with climate change, our work actually varies uh, significantly. We, we do the uh, air quality assessment uh, in Bangladesh. There's another discussion going on on having another air quality uh, testing facility on the above Midas Tower in the ninth, on the on the 27. So air quality is a big issue that is a key focus of ours. Uh, we also work in a uh, entrepreneurship grant that is actually looking into different issues of uh, addressing different issues of climate change. Now, when I was talking about uh, employment and STEM, again, there uh, in the employment side, we are looking more and more and trying to explain to people that how climate change is actually uh, affecting them. Our whole goal of partnering with this youth camp and particularly with this youth camp is basically what we are seeing more and more that with this current generation, uh, it is not about only climate change, it's not about the polar bear or, or the people suffering from flood and everything. The way we have to reach out to them is basically what's in it for them. Uh, and the more and more we can explain it in a way uh, that they understand and, and, and they realize and they can relate the effect of climate change to their daily lives, that's going to make the difference. So to all the participants of the camp who have organized, I'll be very happy to listen to your experience, what worked, what didn't work. And that's that's the beauty of the camp because I, I can, I, I'm pretty sure sitting here that not everything that we did probably worked and that's that's fine. Uh, that's what EMK uh, supports basically that if you fail, we'll back you up, but uh, we'll have to find out how we can evolve our model and see how we can do it better next time. So that's something that we'd like to listen. But in the long run, to reach out to this story, this 50 uh, youth will be conducting camps in, in future 
uh, or training other other youth. Our offer is to support you in any way to see how to identify the best way to reach out to every individual, particularly the young uh, children, uh, young adolescents, and, and youth as a whole. Uh, what would actually make more sense for them? Because the context for us is very different, and probably we will not see uh, so much of the traditional activism that we used to see uh, standing around with the placard on the streets, particularly in Bangladesh. However, what we would like to see that this momentum goes on. Yesterday, we had another event on uh, how do you take photographs and arts and culture uh, paint just to raise awareness regarding climate change? We are actually trying different uh, mediums to reach out to the clients. And, and, and we hope someday when things uh, gets normal and we actually open for public, I would really like to invite Honorable MP and, and the, her presidency the ambassador to come and visit our center because it, it has a full fledged lab where we are actually trying to develop uh, with 3D printers different tools and, and things that we can use for addressing some of the problems. Uh, even during the first days of COVID, when we were preparing the last shoes for the doctors, those were actually printed with the 3D printers in the EMP center. So it has the largest 3D printer uh, in the public space in Bangladesh. So with that, uh, I would like to end, end my speech, but the main thing that I would like to leave behind, not everybody, not every country will probably understand the impact of climate change in the same way. And we hope with you, with this camp, we can tailor our message in the best possible way so that everybody understands that. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, honorable guests, for your appearance today. Thank you. Thank you, Asif. Thank you, Mr. Asif bin Ahmed, for your kind words. Yeah, just now, I would like to uh, invite our next guest, Mr. Monor Mustafa, come to the European Climate Foundation to deliver his speech. Thank you, Mamun. And my dear guests, especially honorable member of parliaments, Her Excellency, Ambassador to Denmark, and my young friends. I am honored once again to be invited to join the closing ceremony of the climate camp. I presume you have thought a lot about the issues raised and discussed in yesterday's inaugural session by a number of renowned guests. And as you can remember, in a yesterday's session, I raised the urgency of reducing the greenhouse gas emission by introducing new renewable technologies. The most valuable, most viable, perhaps the most viable solution to present day climate crisis. Although as a developing country, Bangladesh is emitting very insignificant amount of carbon compared to other developed nations. But we cannot sit idle waiting for others to reduce their emission level as it has serious adverse impact, especially on our lives. Apart from its contribution to global warming, this emission has serious adverse impact on our air quality. As you all know, according to World Air Quality Index, Dhaka is the second worst polluted city in the world. Air is being polluted at a severe scale now, simply because of the use of fossil fuel in power plants, industry, and transport sector. In Bangladesh, we have aggregate level data only on carbon dioxide emission, but very little or no information, even authentic and updated data on other elements responsible for polluting the air such as sulfur dioxide, lead, oxides of nitrogen, ozone, ammonia, particle matters like PM10 and PM2.5. And as a result, we have no clear understanding about how much fossil fuel use is contributing to air pollution. And we clearly lack research and technical capacities, lab facilities to measure the accurate level of emission in Bangladesh. We, should, we must acknowledge that polluted air is a silent killer, sometimes more powerful than present day COVID-19. City dwellers, especially Dhaka and Chattogram, are the worst victim of air pollution. I presume we are not paying that much attention to this deadly killer of human lives. We need to take all possible preventive measures to stop polluting the air 
the highest extent possible. The very first step is to take a serious policy decision about the use of fossil fuel. How we can alter this situation gradually, moving towards renewable sources of energy. It could be applied to both power industry and transport. Of course, we need power, we need industry, we need transportation facilities, but not at the cost of lives, especially when, when alternatives are out there. And all we know that our government is now more concerned about the issue like never before. We have heard about this yesterday as our foreign minister and a special envoy of CBF categorically mentioned some of those initiatives. We are really inspired and hope to see a radical transformation of our energy sector in the coming days. Gradually getting out of fossil fuel is not only important for improving the air quality, but also it is important for our economy as well. Currently, we are spending so much money, perhaps almost 20, 32 billion taka every year to import primary fossil fuel energy. Moving towards renewable could save that amount of money and the amount of money saved could be used for other social development ventures, such as youth development. And this is why we urgently need to move toward clean and green energy not only to save our lives, but also to prosper our national economy, to save our mother earth. I really, I do appreciate what the art society is doing now and planning to be in the future. But I firmly believe that youth voices are quite instrumental to accelerate the pace for transforming the energy sector to pave the way for more clean and green one. I hope the young, young participants this camp can really understand the issue and act accordingly as soon as possible. And thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Manavi. Thank you, Manavosto, for your sharing your thoughts with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next special guest, Her Excellency uh, Winnie Strap Peterson, Ambassador of Denmark to Bangladesh speech. Thank you very much and good afternoon to my fellow speakers and the audience. Now it's a real privilege for me to be here at the closing ceremony of the climate camp as organized by the Earth Society as part of the World Environment Day 2021. So thank you for the Earth Society for inviting me to join you uh, this afternoon and to meet this uh, vibrant team. Over the years, the three years I've been in uh, Bangladesh uh, so far, I've had the opportunity to meet so many businesses, organizations and professionals in Bangladesh. And I'm always impressed by the vibrant energy I need. But in my experience, one group stands out, the Bangladeshi youth who represents, in my view, unparalleled enthusiasm, hope, and forward thinking. So I'm both pleased and honored to meet you today, though only on the screen. Now, climate is high on the agenda across the globe, not least thanks to your generations, the young generations. My country has been and continues to be one of the front runners, also very much driven by the Danish youth and the international uh, collaboration between you. For one, I'm happy to share that Denmark uh, ranked first in the Environmental Performance Index 2020. But more importantly in Denmark, the parliament with strong support from citizens, businesses and companies uh, and other actors passed its first ever climate act in 2020. And with a legally binding uh, target to reduce greenhouse gases in, uh, by ambitious 70% by 2030 and to reach carbon neutrality by 2050, the law sets a clear direction for Denmark's green transition. On the global scene, Denmark aims to be a green frontrunner that can inspire and encourage others. 
to show that going green and climate friendly is also good business and can create jobs. Most people see it as a cost uh, and something com cumbersome, but I think that Denmark is a living proof that it can be uh, profitable and create uh, jobs and going green at the same time. That is very imp uh, important to convince uh, notably the older generations. So we do have the experience and innovation when it comes to green solutions, and we strive to put them to work to tackle the global uh, climate challenges, also in our relations with Bangladesh. That said, the world needs to stand united with global ambitions to reach the Paris Agreement. I'm therefore also very encouraged to see how climate change action receives attention at the highest level of the government of Bangladesh. Among several important milestones, I note uh, with pleasure and uh, yeah, the humility that the Honorable Prime Minister has become the chair of the Climate Vulnerability Forum. And also I understand that the government's uh, Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan is being finalized in order to lead both adaptation and mitigation efforts for this um, country to change and to rightfully take its place in the international scene. But I also see the youth here in Bangladesh as elsewhere and in my own country still has a pivotal role to play. We still need you to lobby and drive us, the older and uh, maybe more powerful generations, to take even more action if it's in our hands. So before I end, allow me also a few words on ecosystem uh, restoration. Um, as you know very well, the theme of this year's World uh, Environment Day. This is our chance to make peace with nature. Protecting and restoring biodiversity and well-functioning ecosystems is key to our future resilience and closely lead, linked to climate uh, mitigation and adaptation. And I think it's fair to argue that Bangladesh knows that better than any other country in the world. So we must all recognize uh, how critical um, investing in nature protection and restoration and finding nature-based solution, nature solutions will be for Bangladesh's future. So let me end here and again thank you very much for organizing and participating in this climate camp. We the world need people like you who are committed to come up with innovative solutions and, peace, and push the rest of us to uh, go the extra mile in this endeavor. I can only, thus I can only uh, encourage you to continue on your path to make the environment safer for the future. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you, Donna Bat. Thank, uh, thank you so much, uh, our Excellency Ambassador of Denmark to Bangladesh for such an inspirational speech. Um, distinguished guests, it's time to ask our very own Mr. Nahim Razak MP, Convener of the Climate Parliament, Bangladesh, and Honorable Member of the Parliamentary Stand Standing Committee on Ministry of Foreign Affairs <coughs> to enlighten this occasion with this kind words. Mamun, thank you so much. And of course, Trina and uh, the rest of the team who have organized this special. Uh, event uh, on the day of uh, commemorating and of course celebrating World uh, Environment Day 2021. Uh, this is a virtual climate ca camp. Uh, yesterday we were very fortunate to actually inaugurate the whole session with the Honorable uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs along with uh, eminent speakers and of course today is the closing ceremony and I welcome everyone and congratulate everyone for a successful two-day event. Uh, Bangladesh as such is a delta, and this is a very uh, eminent question that has been asked always, 
that what does Bangladesh do in terms of facing this imminent crisis of climate change? Um, I just want to elaborate a couple of issues um, for the uh, viewers and participants who are here with us. Uh, Bangladesh lies in an Indo-Burmese uh, uh, biodiversity hotspot. Bangladesh is a tropical country in Southeast Asia, but at the same time, Bangladesh is highly populated and highly dense population which of course creates a lot of challenges for us. This challenge that we face right now due to climate change is a global phenomenon. Bangladesh is taking a lead in terms of creating an ecosystem for the betterment of the population for the future growth of Bangladesh. Um, although Bangladesh is striving to become a climate champion, uh, Bangladesh is having to face enormous challenge in deforestation. This is a very important topic, which is always uh, to a certain extent sidelined due to development progress uh, uh, projects. Uh, just want to elaborate a couple of issues regarding forestation. Uh, Bangladesh has a total of uh, 2.6 million hectares of forest cover, uh, which is about 17% of the total area of the country. Bangladesh has experienced one of the highest rate of deforestation in South Asia which is alarming. Now, talking about uh, deforestation, uh, Bangladesh has one of the uh, lowest per capita forest land in the world, uh, mostly due to high population and densely population in the urban areas. Deforestation is about 2,600 acres per year, which is really alarming. Now, if we were to take a look at the forest areas, we can maybe segregate and maybe we can uh, type it in the sense that I want to follow. One of them is hill forests, which is again, which is a threat because of population migration and of course urbanization. The secondary part is uh, cell forests. So these are another area that is of imminent threat, natural mangrove forest and mangrove plantations, which creates a, a natural barrier towards uh, the cyclones and all sorts of national cal calamities that we have seen in the recent years. Freshwater swamp forest, homestead forest, and village common forest. So these are the six types of forest that, forest that we actually are accustomed to. And of course, looking at this, the main agenda for this two-day session is, in my opinion, we, is a youth-led action plan. This youth-led action plan is required for the youth to be mobilized, to curate and to protect our own nature. So this is uh, something that uh, is very dear to me. Uh, as Trina has mentioned that this has uh, been organized by the Earth Society. And I would hope that in the coming years, uh, this would continue. Advocacy and activism should be of foremost importance. Uh, to do so, of course, we need the support of the government uh, the donor agencies, along with private entrepreneurs and the business community, so that they come forward in terms of funding and support structure for these sort of initiatives to flourish. Now, uh, finally, I just want to uh, elaborate and maybe put across a couple of suggestions that can be uh, taken up by this forum um, so that we can take it forward in terms of action plan. Uh, one is, of course, strengthening uh, institutional capacity. <clears throat> As been mentioned, that institutional capacity has to be, uh, it, there's a lack of institutional capacity, and hence, of course, this institutional capacity uh, should be strengthened through uh, partnership with the private initiators. The secondary would be well coordination between agencies. Unfortunately, we see there is a lack of coordination across agencies who are been given the responsibility to protect our forest and the biodiversity. Uh, so these are lacking that is there and hence a lot of monitoring and advocacy can be done by the youth. So the world coordination is something that we can take up. A well-framed policies and availability of information. Uh, Mr. Mosul Monwar has mentioned and also uh, other uh, speakers have mentioned there's a lack of information, there is information gap that exists. 
proper research is not being done. Um, of course, these pro proper researches should be done and policies should be followed according to the data that has been provided. So there is a, also an opportunity for the youth to be engaged through climate literacy. This is a program that I want to promote. Climate literacy is something that we need to do. So well-informed uh, youth can actually do advocacy towards framing good policies. And those policies needs to have ripple effect across the board. Strengthening enforcement. This, they, again, there's a lacking of uh, enforcement. Um, the protected wildlife sanctuaries are not protected well enough. The enforcement agencies, uh, um, of course, they are shorthanded, but still, you know, they do not get to do their uh, proper job. So strengthening um, this enforcement of these policies and guidelines should be of imminent uh, importance. Uh, inadequate, of course, um, inadequate management of the forest land is existing. Uh, so hence, there should be an adequate and well-managed protected areas. And finally, the most important part is awareness campaign. So these awareness campaigns should be promoted well enough so that we have the youth and the bigger diaspora recognizing uh, the imminent danger that we're in. We all know the significance of climate change. In the recent years, we have seen the likes of uh, super cyclones and even to the extent that high frequency of uh, lightnings are happening across Bangladesh. There is uh, about, I think this year has been alone about 17 deaths through high lightning. So these sort of things uh, needs to be uh, adopted and the government needs to support and government not alone can actually achieve those, um, those problems, but rather the youth advocacy and youth led policies and uh, moderation is required. Uh, of course, the Excellency, uh, the High Commissioner to Denmark in Bangladesh is uh, amongst us. I would urge her to also sh uh, show her support through various programs that they, uh, Danida and others that promotes uh, regarding uh, projects of the rural areas. So these things can be actually achieved. Uh, EMK has different projects. So of course, they have laid, uh, supported this program as strategic partners. So I would request them to also also uh, carry on their support towards uh, uh, advocacy. So of all in all, my uh, final note would be that uh, we are moving towards uh, a green planet uh, initiative. And this year, of course, we all know that uh, sustainability and resilience is of foremost importance. COP26 is of eminent importance, which is going to be hosted in Glasgow. Uh, of course, we are, uh, the government of Bangladesh has uh, already declared net zero targets, uh, cleaner energy, cleaner policies uh, is being uh, adopted. The Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, uh, for Foreign Affairs um, and also the State Minister for Energy and Power in our previous meetings have actually mentioned that 40% of the uh, energy mix should be of uh, renewable energy. Uh, I'm very glad and of course uh, I would also urge the Earth Society and the bigger diaspora to tie up with us so that we can actually create a proper documentation uh, as to the future of energy mix in Bangladesh, which of course the minister has actually mentioned. So these are some of the things that we need to do. And uh, I hope that uh, this two day camp has been very rigorous and very energetic and knowledge shared. Uh, sessions and I would love to see some sort of report after this two-day session so that we can take it forward and make the change happen. So let's not wait for the change to happen. Let's be the change maker. Thank you so much for inviting me and I hope that I have contributed uh, well enough for the uh, listeners. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bert. Thank you uh, for your inspiring us with the insightful work. Like to we could participate in the expert session uh, in, in breakout rooms. Like um, I would like to request all the participants. They will automatically go into the breakout session now. So after thirty minutes, we will be back in the. Um, so, 
So I will just uh, yeah uh, interrupt here. Uh, basically, uh, now like this is like a formal closing sessions that we have planned. Uh, but uh, before we go to the breakout session, we would love to have like a picture with our ambassadors and uh, with all of our guests because from here maybe uh, uh, they will actually leave. So we don't wanna. We definitely don't wanna. Uh, waste our opportunity to take the picture together. So can you please turn on the camera and then we will take some snapshots and then we will go for our breakout session. Thank you. So, yeah, the snapshot, uh, screenshot is going on. So, we are almost there. Yeah, we are good. So, yeah, that's it. And uh, I would like to thank Miss um, Winnie and uh, Mr. Asif Sar uh, for being with us today. Um, the rest of the guests will actually stay with us for uh, the expert session uh, and they will go to the breakout session. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much and a good win as you go forward. Bye. Bye. Thank you. আমি আবুল খায়ার মুর্শিদগঞ্জের লোহজং থেকে বলছি আমি মোহাম্মদ মনির হোসেন চট্টগ্রামের আগবশী এলাকা থেকে বলছি আমি ময়মনসিংহ থেকে শাহরিন সিদ্দিকা জয়তি বলছি সোসাইটি সহযোগিতায় একটি ক্লাইমেট ক্যাম্প ক্লাইমেট ক্যাম্প ক্লাইমেট ক্যাম্প ক্লাইমেট ক্যাম্প ক্লাইমেট ক্যাম্প ক্লাইমেট ক্যাম